Hello. Hello, hello, and welcome to an early Comic Book Herald Live here on Wednesday, July 27, 2022. I'm Dave Using, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. You're listening to Comic Book Herald Live. Today, we are going to engage in some reckless speculation about writer Jonathan Hickman's upcoming Marvel work. It was announced at San Diego Comic-Con. He's going to be doing a series with Valerio Shidi. All we have at this point in time is like a little teaser image that says nothing. <laughs> like it's if there are words, but it doesn't say anything. And also we have a very nebulous promise from Hickman that it will be like Sandman for the Marvel Universe. Sandman, of course, being the Neil Gaiman written uh, DC Vertigo series throughout the 1990s. So we'll talk a little bit about what we think that might be. I've got a theory that I feel pretty good about. I feel pretty good about. So we're going to be going live talking about that. Thanks to everybody who is here listening live. Much appreciated. If you were here in the chat, let me know if you're having any issues with sound, with video, etc. And uh, and engage in your own healthy, reckless speculation yourselves. Uh, that's what we're here to do today. We're going to recklessly speculate. Now, we can also, of course, talk about the big MCU announcements at San Diego in terms of what the movies are going to be. As you might be able to tell if you're watching the video, not just listening to the pod, behind me, I'm a pretty big fan of Secret Wars. <laughs> <laughs> really like um, the comics, uh, the 1984 and, of course, the 2015 versions. Got them up on the wall here behind me. Um, yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it, and and obviously that's going to continue to be true. I really appreciated that uh, the Kurt Busiek, George Perez-era Avengers, King Destiny, the King Dynasty, rather, are, are coming as well. That was, that was a nice deep cut. I didn't expect that one. So we can talk about that maybe a little bit, but definitely we're going to start with the Hickman Marvel series because I have... Honestly, I feel like I know what it is. <laughs> like, like I feel pretty locked in to what this might be. I'm even more locked in to what it's not. I'm definitely even more locked in to what it's not. So I'm going to start things here. I'm going to start things here with a question, a comments we got here in the chat already. Thanks again to those of you who are here live. Keep them coming. I'll respond to what I can. It says, hey, Dave, about the Hickman Sheedy book, I have a lead. A few days ago, a list of titles for Marvel comic books and movies came out, and one of those names was Avengers Eternity Wars. Since the movie ones came true, so, so presumably this is referring to the report of the copyrights Marvel filed, I think it was in Europe, um, that kind of preempted the knowledge that, like, okay, Avengers Secret Wars and Avengers uh, King Dynasty are coming at San Diego. Uh, one of those is Eternity Wars, which I guess has not been claimed by the movies yet. Uh, I would be I would be surprised... If Avengers Eternity Wars was a Hickman written project, um, if that's what this would reference to. Now, the involvement of someone like an Eternity, a cosmic figure, as we're going to talk about a little bit here, I think is in play. And in fact, I think is the leading candidate for what might be going on. Uh, but I think Avengers Eternity, if that is going to be a comic series and it's not an MCU thing, then my expectation would be that's a Jason Aaron written project. Jason Aaron's doing all sorts of giant Avengers multiverse stuff. An Eternity Wars thing might have already been announced with him <laughs> with him writing it, and I just don't follow it closely enough. Um, but but he is doing huge, huge Avengers stuff. So I, I, I have to say, too, I would also... So Jonathan Hickman is a comics creator that obviously I am a fan of, um, but on the Marvel side of things, like what he is most well-known for is his Fantastic Four, his Avengers leading to Secret Wars in 2015, the best comic book event of all time, and then uh, most recently X-Men, right? And obviously there's other stuff in there, but like those are the big franchises that I think when when fans talk about his work, those are the ones they're thinking of uh, on the Marvel side of things, right? Um, going back, I think, to any of those in, in very explicit details, for example, like, oh, the return to Avengers, I, that seems unlikely, I feel like progression-wise, he wouldn't want to go back to a title he'd already done. And also, just as a fan of the work, uh, I would find that somewhat off-putting as well. I think it's definitely a lot more exciting to myself and perhaps others if it's going to be something new, if it's going to be something different. Because here's the thing, we already have my favorite Avengers run of the last forever. I mean, I because I hadn't, I hadn't put a rank to it before. But, uh, but yeah, the Hickman Avengers with New Avengers is my favorite Avengers book of all time. I don't need a re-up, right? It could be cool, but I don't need a re-up. So I, I like where your head's at. I like where your head's at. I like that you're you're scooping it here. 
Um, but I would not be willing to put money on Avengers Eternity War as the Hickman Sheedy book, okay? Uh, as the images roll here, as the images roll here, we're going to come across the, the actual announcement. Um, what I've got on the screen, you know, first thing here is, is a quote that is based on a question that I asked Hickman via X-Men Mondays. And basically what that was is, will your new Marvel project, and this was back in the wake of Hickman's initial announcement that, you know, he was stepping off of the X-Books, right? So this is late 2021. OK, and I the question I asked was like, is this stuff going to connect to X-Men anymore or, you know, are you doing something totally different? And obviously he was vague because he couldn't say what the project was yet. But um, but, it, you know, basically he was like, it's not going to be X-Men related. It's not going to be X-Men related. Now, could he be lying? Could he, you know, not want to spoil things because that's a that's something this creator does a lot? Absolutely. Right. Like, I, I don't think we should put too much stock in that beyond the fact that the, the piece that he says there is like, I don't want to step on the toes of the people in the X office that are writing these comics already. That part, I think, is is a lock. I think that is true. He doesn't want to do that. Um, that seems true to character. That seems like it makes total sense with what he built as part of the X office and the head of X for a period of time. So let's, let's check this one off the list. Check this one off the list. It's not going to be an X-Men book. Okay? It's not going to be an X-Men book. And as you see the images scroll by, of the Beyonders, of the Living Tribunal, dead in the build to Secret Wars, you're getting a sense here of what I think it is. I think it's going to be huge. I think it's going to be huge, and I think it's going to be super duper cosmic. It's going to be a mega cosmic series. I, I am very, very confident in this. Now, some folks might think, oh, okay, Guardians of the Galaxy then. I've been saying this for a long time, a long time now, okay? It's not going to be a standard Marvel ongoing comic book. I'm going to say it one more time. For the folks in the back, it's not going to be a standard Marvel ongoing comic. It's just not. That's not happening, I would guess, ever again. It will be a cool miniseries or maxi series, though. Here's the quote. Here's the tease. What happens when the powers that be meet the natural order of things? Hickman and Valerio Shidi in 2023. Okay, the powers that be in the Marvel Universe, this could refer to a whole bunch of things, right? It could refer to Avengers, right? They're, they're the power center of the Marvel Universe in some ways. But the powers that be of the Marvel Universe are essentially the cosmic pantheon, right? And obviously the, the sea of stars behind the text makes you think, yeah, that makes sense, right? Meet the natural order of things. This is where we get even vaguer. Um, but in general, the natural order of things, that could mean the return of something, right, to the Marvel Universe, a la Miracle Man. It could mean the natural order of things is the heat death of the universe, is entropy, is decay, right? And this could be an end of the Marvel Universe kind of book, which I think would, would actually be very, very likely. But I think the thing to me that feels like a lock, that feels the most certain, is it's going to be a giant cosmic pantheon kind of maxi-series and event. Um, I'm seeing in the comments here, Celestial's mini- Eternity Saga and Celestials at the End of Time, Strong Contenders. Uh, those, are, Yes, those are great picks. Those are aligned with the types of things that I'm saying. Um, one big question that I would have is like, is it going to be um, in continuity? Does it have to be, right? Because I, I actually think there's a really good chance and there's a really good argument to make that it shouldn't be. I mean, one of my ideas... One of my pitches now for, for the longest time, ever since Heckman sticked away from X-Men, was like, I'd really like to see him sort of take a head of position at a new Marvel Black Label, right? DC Comics, they have Black Label, and it's where they put out all their out-of-continuity, just-let-creators-go-to-work kind of books, and they don't have to worry about the, the continuity or the baggage of ongoing comics. Now, I love ongoing comics, and I love superhero continuity, and I actually think Marvel's got DC beat right now at that game however slightly, um, but the comics that I like the most coming out of either publisher generally, but DC definitely, are the Black Label stuff, right? Um, a Marvel doesn't have anything close. They don't have anything close to comparable. I've talked about this a bunch. Uh, Hickman doing the head of that. This being a piece of that could be exciting. It could be really exciting, okay? If it's this big celestial saga, it's a maxi-series Valerio Shidi. I mean, Valerio Shidi, let's talk about this. The artist tied to the project 
What are they known for? Well, Sheedy's been doing Judgment Day, the ongoing Marvel event right now, right? Did some Inferno with Hickman at the end of last year, did a bunch of Empire without Ewing and Dan Slott. If you're sensing a trend here, <laughs> these are event books. This is a big, heavy hitter on the event scene. Now, Sheedy has also worked with Dan Slott on the ongoing Iron Man run uh, a handful of years ago, um, as well as doing some stuff with Al Ewing on Sword. So, like, there are some ongoing ties, but the, the implication, the suggestion here is it could be a Marvel Universe event. It could be, but more likely to me is it's a big maxi series. Now, while I like the idea of it fitting in black label, or as I'm seeing here from Tyler, you know, a Vertigo type label, right here in, which is the best way to consider it, right? For those of you who know, if you're doing Sandman in the Marvel Universe, well, Sandman lived at Vertigo, right? That's where that book is. I mean, what's funny is the idea of Sandman in the Marvel Universe, it's easy to forget or overlook that Neil Gaiman's Sandman is Sandman in the DC Universe. <laughs> like, like, that goes overlooked. But if you reread those first six issues of Sandman, which remains my second favorite comic book series of all time. No, I'm not interested in the Netflix series. <laughs> like, like zero shade, zero shade. Truly, I am just completely disinterested in an adaptation. If it starts getting rave reviews, I guess I'll check it out. But it's like, I don't need to repeat something I love, but worse. <laughs> it just doesn't appeal to me. Um, and I, and again, that's not a criticism. I haven't seen anything. It's just the movie, the show is so rarely better than the book, especially if it's not doing new things. Okay. But it's not a Sandman conversation, but if you read those first six issues, Sandman is firmly in the DC universe, right? Characters spend time in Arkham Asylum, the first six issues in particular. And then we kind of get out of that and it becomes its own thing and Morpheus in the Endless in that realm. It doesn't really feel like it needs to be a part of a DC Universe comic, even though it can reference those characters later in Dreams. And in recent years, you know, Morpheus appeared in things like DC Metal. Why? Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows other than it made a very mild comics press splash for like a day. <laughs> it was super bonkers beyond that. But again, if you're going to do that, if you're going to do Sandman of the Marvel Universe, um, it doesn't have to be heavily, heavily tied to Marvel Universe stuff. Sandman progresses away from that over time, but what you can use, and where not a lot of story has been done outside of the world of the GOAT, Jim Starlin, okay, is the Cosmic Pantheon. There's a lot of stuff you can do there, right? With an endless style collection of beings of immense power that represent different things across the Marvel Universe, right? You have characters here like Eternity, right? The literal embodiment of all that is. You have Infinity, you have the Living Tribunal, you have Celestials, you have Galactus, right? You have the Stranger, you have the Collector and that whole family. You have a lot of roads you can travel. Um, I think the most interesting question, the most interesting question to me is who's going to be our Sandman? Who's our Morpheus traveling through this cosmic side of things that Hickman and Sheedy are exploring, right? Like, who's going to be the voice of that? And I think that's a tricky one if you're looking at the cosmic pantheon of characters to pick, like, a head character that's going to be doing the traveling, right? Who's the POV here? Is it going to be Ego the Living Planet? <laughs> Is it going to be uh, the in-betweener, right? Some of these, these oddballs. Is it going to be the runner, <laughs> relative of the collector or and I think the most likely scenario or a more likely scenario is Hickman goes back to Franklin Richards I mean Franklin Richards is in Hickman's Fantastic Four run a character that he builds up as you know the hero of the future essentially right like all that power finally manifests finally comes to fruition to the point that Galactus is Franklin's herald <laughs> right? He comes back in time, battles Mad Celestials, this sort of thing, right? If you've read the Fantastic Four run, you know it's incredible. I think that's a very likely POV character. That's also something that has been done semi-recently in the Mark Wade and, is it Javier Rodriguez? I think it's Javier Rodriguez, um, History of the Marvel Universe books. Like, that is a story between Galactus and Franklin Richards talking about the history of Marvel. Of course, the Watchers in play. 
right? We have Chaos and Order. Um, Quasar, Silver Surfer, Adam Warlock, these are always characters that are in play in, again, the GOAT Starlinverse, okay? But I, I really, really strongly think this is the type of book it's going to be. It's going to be a mini series or a maxi series. It is, again, cross it off the list, not going to be an X-Men book. It is not. Zero percent chance. Zero percent chance. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing here maybe a Thanos book. Um, I mean, I, like these types of stories tend to involve Thanos because they tend to be Jim Starlin stories, right? We're talking Infinity Gauntlet. We're talking Infinity Wars. And that sort of thing. I think you can have Thanos involved. Um, I'd be, I'd be first off. I'd be in. I'd be all the, like I'm all the way in anyway. But like I, I would be very excited if it was a Thanos story. It's a little hard to imagine doing a Thanos kills the Cosmic Pantheon thing, just given that like Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw tread those waters pretty pretty thoroughly with Thanos wins not that long ago. Um, that feels mildly repetitive. I also don't. Don't think Hickman is a great Thanos writer. Like, we have enough reps here in Avengers and New Avengers and Infinity and uh, Secret Wars. Like, like he's good, but he's not great. Um, he is he is adequate enough that I don't get mad. Like, generally, I get mad <laughs> with anyone except for Jim Starlin writing Thanos. Okay? It is one of my biggest nerd hangups is, like, truly, truly experiencing anger. <laughs> <laughs> writers who aren't Jim Starlin trying to write Thanos. It generally goes badly. Um, Hickman's fine. He pulls it off. But it's not like him writing Doctor Doom, where it's it's like, oh, he can write a villain like nobody else, right? And it's amazing, and I love it. Uh, is Thanos in that great? It's okay. It's okay. It's acceptable. It's not the maker. It's not Doctor Doom. It's not great. Um, but that's fine. So, no, I, I don't think it'll be a, a, a Thanos story, at least not in the focus. Um, let's see, some other popular picks here. What if it's Doctor Strange, right? What if it's him as the Traveler? Maybe he remains dead, asks Tyler. Doctor Strange was a popular pick, certainly heading into this. Um, it's not off the table, right? The, the cosmic backdrop is always in play. I mean, yeah, right now, Doctor Stephen Strange is dead, <laughs> right? Clea is the Sorcerer Supreme in the Jed McKay written run, which BTW is really good. It's really flipping good. If you're not reading Strange with Clea as the Sorcerer Supreme um, and you're mildly interested, check it out because that book rules. Jeb McKay is one of the best writers of Marvel right now. I was pretty on the fence about it. I was pretty checked out uh, after reading The Death of Doctor Strange. I didn't like that mini all that much and I wasn't that excited about diving into Strange. Uh, it's been very, very good. Uh, so so check that run out. But yes, it, it, is Doctor Strange still in play? Could he even be the POV character? Uh, possibility. It's a possibility. I like Franklin at the end of all things, like in a future set story, a little bit more, you know? I, I think doing a kind of end of the Marvel Universe thing with this Cosmic Pantheon, or, or at least like possible futures type stuff, would be a little more interesting to me. But yeah, Doctor Strange is in play. I don't, I'd be a little surprised if it was, I mean, it's still in play, but I'd be a little surprised if it was the sort of Doctor Strange maxi series book that really codifies a lot of magic and fixes magic in the Marvel Universe and all that stuff that people hope for, you know, like that doesn't feel crazy likely to me. Um, I'm seeing com some commentary here about Defenders Beyond. Number one, I haven't read it yet. That's the, the Al Ewing and Javier Rodriguez book. They've done a few Defenders things together. Um, I'm excited to check that out. I'm sure it's going to be good. I'm sure it's going to be related to all this, but I haven't actually read it yet. Uh, so don't say too much. Don't say too much. I'm definitely going to check it out. Let's see. Um, Uatu, I, I hope Uatu is not a primary POV character because he's always the worst. <laughs> like, Uatu is just a running joke at this point. Uh, obviously, some things have changed recently on the Fantastic Four side of things, but I'm not that invested in those comics. Uh, Manifold or Franklin are good choices. Adam Warlock, if we're going full Starlin, I, I don't know. I kind of think, I kind of think creators should be smart enough to not go full Starlin. Um, to not try to, cause like, here's the thing. If you're doing an Adam Warlock cosmic pantheon story, like you're doing Jim Starlin, you know, and you really got to bring it. And obviously Jonathan Hickman has a reputation here where he can do that. Like I just said, you know, he's one of the few characters who was pulled off of Thanos post Starlin. Um, but that's kind of, I don't know that that's hallowed ground 
and I think that could be a problem. I'm seeing your comment from from Marius that uh, uh, Gillen has done a good job with Thanos. I like Karen Gillen's Thanos better than than I like Jonathan Hickman's. Um, I will I'll just go on record as saying that. My first thought was Doctor Doom. Here from Comics Away, Doctor Doom as a Sandman figure of the Marvel Universe working with or around the Cosmic Pantheon, I mean, just pour it into my veins. Pour it into my veins. I don't know that it makes any sense, but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> like, let's do it. I mean, the big thing here is just like, it's got to be crazy cosmic. It's got to be massive world building. Certainly it's possible that it, like, it could be Guardians of the Galaxy as kind of, because like, because here's the thing is like, okay, what's the title then? Right? If we're like, oh, it's going to be giant cosmic pantheon, it's going to be some relatively known Marvel character sort of traveling and being the Sandman of that universe. Well, cool, but what do you call it? Right? Um, and if it's Hickman, Cheaty, Eternity Wars, as was teased earlier, that's vague. Um, if it's Guardians of the Galaxy, Eternity Wars, right? Now people kind of have a buy-in, but I, I don't think it's going to be like a proper Guardians book. And the main reason I think that is like, I don't know how you get from um, Sam and the Marvel Universe from that place of like a very regular team book, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think it'll be super interesting. That's my, that's my top pick by far is just that it's going to be massively cosmic. It's going to involve the whole pantheon. I really hope it's going to be at least parts of it kind of powers of 10 style set in the future, you know, cause I think there's so much that can and, and maybe will be done there that was abandoned by Hickman in X-Men, you know, a lot of the stuff that I was most excited by in X-Men was Powers of Ten teases about all these galactic societies and the way the Phoenix interacts is with Phalanx, and you could do all that stuff in a cosmic proper book a bit easier than you can when you're actually trying to do the day-to-day -day of mutants on Earth, you know? So, like, I would love to see that fleshed out in more detail. Now, the, the other part of the story here is that in the, the panel... I guess at San Diego, Hickman said, you know, this was, he pitched this alongside House and Powers. Like there were two big ideas. House and Powers got the green light first, which not surprising. And he says, this is his favorite thing he's done in the Marvel Universe, which is the right thing to say <laughs> before you start a project. But again, if that's true, that's real exciting. That is super, super exciting. Um, I do also have to rule out, and uh, I guess... I have a confession here as well. So when I keep saying, you know, the Sandman of the Marvel Universe, obviously the Marvel Universe has a Sandman, <laughs> Flint Marco. Uh, we are referencing the DC Vertigo Sandman series. I, when I was first getting into comics, I, I 1 billion percent saw that Sandman was like this acclaimed book. I didn't know anything about it beyond like, oh, this is like an acclaimed classic. It's real literary. And I thought someone had taken Sandman, Spider-Man's villain, and done, like, a really literary slice of life thing with Flint Marco. Like, this, like, I, it was, I don't know how long I thought this, but more than one hour, <laughs> maybe even more than one day. Uh, I, there was definitely a period of time I distinctly remember thinking how cool that would be. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disappointed that that's not what it was and that that doesn't exist. Uh, because I still think there's meat on those bones. There's definitely meat on those bones. Um, all right, let's see, see, see. So I'm seeing from Emmanuel here, Al Ewing is said to map out the mystery beyond the eight Marvel cosmos in Defenders Beyond. You're like, yeah, that's the thing too about, okay, if this is going to be a giant who's who of the Marvel cosmic scene and all of the sort of galactic cosmic stuff going on there, like, like what's the overlap? Right, because Al Ewing's played in that space for you know six years now, after Secret Wars, since Ultimates. Um, there's definitely a thread of overlap if it's too much about like, here's how this stuff works, and and here's how these things relate to each other, and the different um, versions of Marvel. Like like I think that that realm is going to remain strictly Ewing's. That doesn't seem like the sort of thing that Hickman's going to invest too much time into. Doesn't seem like the type of story that he necessarily wants to do um bring back uh bring back the black swans i'm seeing from the avengers run like why not definitely could be in play there, there's nothing hickman loves more than a character whose entire color scheme is just black and white so that will happen <laughs> it's really just a matter of who 
Um, I, I don't think it's going to be Adam Warlock. I know in the Marvel Cosmic scene that it's Adam Warlock makes sense and that that's generally what happens. Uh, I just think that's too on the nose with the Starlin legacy, and I think it would be a mistake. I also, I don't totally know what Adam Warlock's deal is right now. So, like, I've got here, in the build of Secret Wars, the Living Tribunal was killed, okay? And then around that same time, Jim Starlin was doing his own original graphic novels, but they were, like, semi-uncontinuity. And one of the things that happened there was Adam Warlock became the Living Tribunal, I have no idea what the, the current state status of those things are. <laughs> is Adam Warlock still the Living Tribunal? I guess probably haven't we seen him? We've probably seen him since in like Infinity Wars and those weird Duggan events. Um, I, somebody tell me because I, I don't want to do the homework <laughs> of catching up on all that. Um, but I do. I am mildly curious. Uh, so, all right. Let's see. Um, I'm seeing here from Chris. No chance you think it could be him borrowing Storm as part of her whole going to the stars thing. Again, based on what I know of the creators, what the tease is, and the quote Hickman gave to my excellent question <laughs> about not wanting to step on X writer's toes, I think there's a 0% chance it's X-Men. I think there's a 0% chance anyone from the X-Men is in this. I mean, here's the thing, if Hickman takes Storm, and it's in continuity. It could be out continuity and be a Storm thing. Sure, do it. But if it's the in continuity Storm stuff that we're curious about, he's writing an X-Men story, right? He's doing it. So then it would be a return to X-Men, right? I don't care how different it is or how different it feels. If Storm is our POV, he's writing an X-Men story. And it matters for what's going on in X-Men comics. And it also matters in terms of what they can and can't write now. L. Ewing can't keep writing Storm on Araco if that's happening, right? So, so I don't think that will happen. Would I be super interested in that? Of course. Yeah, I mean, it'd be really fun. Um, but uh, but no, I, I think there's a 0% chance. Locking that one down as is off the list. Let's also let's also check off Hickman uh, is going to come save Spider-Man. Okay, that's not happening. Right? First off, this tease, <laughs> nothing about it indicates Spider-Man. Uh, second off, I think that's a bad idea, actually. Um, I don't really think that fits. I, I think as much as I know... And have argued that, like, hey, Hickman can write good Spider-Man. And, and a really funny relationship between Johnny Storm and Spider-Man is he's proven in FF. That is not what people come to the creator for. And is not their bread and butter. Also, Spidey is in pretty good hands with Zeb Wells as the writer right now. I like what Zeb Wells is doing on Amazing. I don't know how long that's going to last. But I feel pretty okay about it right now. I feel pretty okay about it. Um, so, so that's not happening. I also think... Uh, I, I've been saying for a long time, there's no way it's going to be Inhumans. Uh, this does not suggest that it could or might be Inhumans. And plus, I mean, I don't know if you followed anything in the MCU lately, <laughs> but the Inhumans feel pretty off the table. Inhumans feel pretty on the back burner uh, as far as Marvel focus is concerned. And like, I don't think Kevin Feige is like giving any direct orders to Marvel Comics, but clearly... Clearly, Marvel Comics is following what's happening in the MCU, right? And they're they're responding to and reacting to and trying to use that as a boost for comic sales. And doing anything with the Inhumans is just, like, counterintuitive to that, right? It doesn't help. It does not help. Um, so I, there's, I don't think it'll be Inhumans, despite the fact that, obviously, he wrote some cool Inhuman stuff in Fantastic Four. Um, but, you know, we have that run. We have Fantastic Four. Uh, and we have that inhuman stuff. I don't think it'll be that. All right. Um, seeing so it coming here from Vince. At the end of Duggan Infinity Wars, Adam Warlock was all depressed because the Soul Stone was made sentient and left him. That sounds a billion percent right. Uh, that's that's the Adam Warlock story, baby. <laughs> he was all depressed, dot, dot, dot. That's how it goes. That's how it goes when you're the golden boy. Uh, BT Dubs, Guardians of the Galaxy video game, rules. Love that game. So good. It's going to be It's going to be genuinely hard. For Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 to live up to that video game, which I never in a million years would have thought would be the case. But it's absolutely true. Uh, Black Bolt is the Sandman of the Marvel Universe. <laughs> sure, he's not busy. He's not busy. Let him travel the cosmos. All right, get some questions in, get some thoughts in. I'm going to sip some coffee here, and then we'll carry on. I mean, the, yeah, the only X-Men threads or continuation that I could see being involved in this theory 
or in this series rather, would be um, what Kinky is saying here: a celestial host ascending to a dominion, phalanx promises, right? That stuff. If we can weave that into the cosmic scene, and then it's like, oh, this is what he was talking about back in Powers of Ten, but he's not writing X Men comics again. I think that stuff could fit and be very, very fun. I mean, I, what do you all think? Like, do you think this series will be set in present day, scattered throughout time? I think is my preference. Um, and the perhaps most importantly, is this in or out of continuity? Is this in or out of continuity? Now, I actually think if you're Marvel and, and you're planning for books and you have Hickman under contract and you're paying him the big bucks, you want this thing to be in continuity. Again, I love the idea of launching a Hickman spearheaded black label. Um, but the counter argument is look at what happened when he delivered House of X and Powers of Ten, right? Look what Marvel is now able to sustain in terms of not just X Men series living in that world that he built with Pepe Larraz and Arby Silva and all the great collaborators, right? But also like the whole Marvel universe is now getting sucked into that gravity well of how cool that event was, you know? Like, and that's what I was saying recently on streams, like the center of the Marvel Universe is and should and will increasingly become X-Men centered. That's where it's going, okay? Judgment Day's proving that. The, the Marvel Universe event right now is an Eternals versus X-Men event. The Avengers are side players, little side pieces, and the core, the core of the first issue of the Marvel Universe event was an X-Men devastation, was mutant genocide on planet Araco, right? So, I mean, or at least, you know, as it seems. I'm sure things will be updated here in the in with coming issues. But it's like I, the idea that this would be out of continuity is probably better for the book. Like it would probably mean a freer 8 to 12 issues or whatever it's going to be. Uh, but it's worse for Marvel because if it's in continuity and it's a launching pad for what the cosmic slate of comics can be, then you're going to get so much more mileage out of it and so many more books are going to have so much more attention. And I think that's the play. Like, I think what they're going to start doing is probably, like, the contract is going to become Hickman comes in when he has an idea, he does a mega event, and then that sets up a really interesting new status quo for other creators to take and run with. Basically, what X-Men would have been if he didn't hang around for X-Men New Mutants and Giant Size, right? If he had just done House and Powers and then said, all right, here's the playground, have at it, which is where we are now and where we got anyway. I think that's what this book is going to be, but for Marvel Cosmic, right? So then after this, these issues come out, you're going to have new creators on Guardians, you're going to have new creators on a Silver Surfer book. You're going to have new creators on, I don't know, Quasar, <laughs> right? Whoever comes out of this looking good. And, and like, it's just going to be a spearhead. And it's going to launch, if this thing hits and it's exciting, here are all the books that come out of it. And I don't think Hickman's going to be involved beyond that. You know, again, we're not going to get a long, ongoing Hickman series again. Like, I just don't, like, certainly not for the short term. Certainly not in the next few years. Like, like this creator has a job, <laughs> you know? Like, Three Moons, Three Worlds is a legitimate comics business, or at least it wants to be, right? But they're pulling in money. They're paying Mike Del Mundo and Mike Huddleston and all their collaborators. They hired Stephen Wacker as their editor-in-chief, and he left a job, a big position, with, like, Marvel Animation, Right? Like, they're treating Three Moons, Three Worlds, their Substack Enterprise, like a comics publisher, a bona fide threat, a bona fide comics publisher, okay? That's still happening. <laughs> like, like, there just aren't enough hours in the day, even for a creator as talented and that I respect as much as Jonathan Hickman, to, like, do that and be writing ongoings for Marvel Comics. It's not happening, right? It's just not happening. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be an interesting mini or maxi series. It's going to re- set what is possible on the cosmic side of things. And then we're going to get a bunch of new books. Pip the Troll. I'm seeing Pip the Troll recommended. Yeah, hell yeah. Give me give me the Pip the Troll five-issue mini. Should we fancast this? Who's writing Pip? 
Um, Al Ewing would obviously do well, but I can't just say Al Ewing for everything. Um, who's got the chops? Who's got the comedy chops? I mean, Zeb Wells would be good for Pip the Troll. Um, Patton Oswalt. Here you, here's you go. Patton Oswalt literally playing the character in the MCU. How about also writing the series with Jordan Bloom, co-writer on, on some comics right now, and of Modoc fame, right? Let's get that thing going. That'd be cool. All right, what do we got? What do we got comics-wise? Let's see. If we consider the MCU, I'm seeing here from Comics Away, the best bet is either Thor or the Eternals. Now, Hickman has not done an, uh, a Marvel Universe Thor thing. He did Ultimate Thor in the Ultimate Universe. Um, hmm. I had not really considered that. I don't expect anything Thor-related. Uh, I guess partially because I'm just not that excited about it, but also, like, that book's pretty well claimed by Cates and Nick Klein. Like, they've got a thing going on there. Um, Thor ebbs and flows for me, too. Like, I, I was pretty disappointed by the first six issues, um, just because I had really high hopes. Uh, since that time, it's done some really interesting stuff. We've gotten some good Throg. We've got some wild Don Blake stuff. Um, Thor is interesting right now. Now, the Eternals, we can't rule that out. We definitely can't rule that out. Uh, Karen Gillan, like, as far as we know, like, he's off the title. But also, he's writing the Eternals event right now. Um, I, If I'm Hickman, I don't know why you'd want to pick up Eternals after Gillen, like, fixed it and made it the best. That seems like a weird play, you know? Like, like that they would basically change, change hands, exchange hands um, between X-Men and Eternals. I mean, it's not, again, we can't rule it out. Like, yes, like, they have some MCU focus, although... I do question how important the Eternals really are to the MCU. They had a movie, yes. <laughs> I am aware. I liked it way better than uh, than the average critical consensus, but I kind of imagine that Feige and company were pretty embarrassed to have a movie that actually got knocked around. You know, that actually got slapped around. Um, I mean, it's the first Marvel movie to get slapped around like that in, in ages. You know, I would guess, and this is, again, reckless speculation. It's the name of the day. I would guess they're pretty embarrassed about that. Pretty mad about it, probably. Every MCU movie that has come out since Eternals, and I've seen this cycle around on social a number of places, has not referenced the fact that there is a celestial literally sticking out of Antarctica, <laughs> wherever that movie ended, right? Like, that's a world-changing kind of thing. And it has not been mentioned. Eternals hasn't come up since. Will it come up again? Yeah, I don't think it's going to go the way of, of Edward Norton Hulk, um, but I don't know that it's a major priority either. Plus, again, the Eternals already have good stuff going on as well. Okay? They already do have good stuff going on as well. Let's see. What other commentary do we have here? A complete reset of the multiverse. Um, well, I mean, that's basically what, like, Secret Wars kind of was, right? Um... A beginning and end of time. Hickman loves a time circle. Let's people pick and choose what impacts current continuity. I, I, I do hope it is spread throughout time. I think I think that would be the coolest. Um, it, it Again, it allows for a ton of flexibility. And yeah, like you're saying, it does also allow for like not being too invasive with ongoing super continuity, but also being offering potential if people do want to pick things up. I think that'd be pretty cool. Hmm, let's see. Star-Lord became the Master of the Sun, so maybe he could be the, the POV character. He could be our Sam Man of the Marvel Universe. Yeah, uh, I, I imagine it's going to be more, less current continuity than that. Probably a little, a little broader and a little more general. Again, like these books are marketed heavily and doing Al Ewing's Master of the Sun stuff is like, that's pretty deep nerd stuff. <laughs> You know, that's pretty deep in, in current Guardian State. And also, again, like, it doesn't reflect MCU at all. I'm seeing it from Vince. Man, I just want Black Monday murders 9 through 12. Yeah, I mean, for absolutely. Like, <laughs> I would I would give up any possible Hickman project for the rest of Black Monday murders. It's that good. It's that good. And we're going to get there in Hickmania. I didn't even mention, but if you follow the Comic Carol channel here, please like and subscribe. Uh, I do Hickmania. We're going through his entire creator-owned catalog, one book a month. We just did Secret with Open Mike Eagle. We're going to be having East of West is coming up next with the one and only Blurred Without Fear. Uh, and then Black Monday Murders is on the docket. 
here in the future, but I, I do agree. That would be amazing. Let's see. Do we have any other questions? I don't think Marvel Cosmic has as much continuity in history as X-Men to sustain a huge line for four plus years. Uh, I would disagree. I would strongly disagree. Um, Marvel Cosmic has vast, vast history and continuity, right? I mean, dating back to Stan and Jack stuff in the 60s, but then also, you know, like I've been saying, Jim Strong and stuff in the 70s. Um, there's plenty there. I mean, just look at the Annihilation era from 2006 to 2010. Annihilation through Thanos Imperative, right? And that's just Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning and collaborators doing Annihilation, Annihilation Conquest, War of Kings, Realm of Kings, into Thanos Imperative. That stuff was great. That stuff was amazing. And I, I think there's a lot of untapped stuff that they didn't even get into there. So I, 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 do, I actually do think you could have a whole Marvel Cosmic thing that we know we have seen it done for at least five years. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I don't, I think if you do it right, there's plenty on the bone. You can keep it running. Let's see. Nervous about MCU Secret Wars just because it is so fan four heavy and isn't established in the current MCU. I mean, this, this Secret Wars will be Avengers heavy. I think we can expect that change right off the bat. The weirdest thing about the announcement of Avengers Secret Wars, which was not in any way surprising, um, anyway, cl anybody claiming that they called Avengers Secret Wars, but but not timestamping that to like 15 years ago, I am unimpressed. <laughs> Everybody has been saying this forever. Um, we all knew this was coming. It, it was not a secret if you were involved and engaged with this stuff at all. Uh, I don't think the story they do will be that Fantastic Four heavy. The thing I found the weirdest was when they announced it, they announced that it was going to be like a Fantastic Four movie and then Avengers Secret Wars like within I don't know, like six months, a year. Like it was not a lot of time. It was not a lot of time between those movies. So if it is going to be, obviously the Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom have to be involved. I mean, if they do Secret Wars and Doctor Doom's not involved, I'm walking. I will walk out of that theater. I will, I will throw popcorn on the ground. I will pick it all up because I'm not rude. Um, but I will also walk out of that theater. <laughs> okay. So you got to expect that's going to happen. Uh, but no, I don't think it's going to be super Fantastic Four heavy a la Hickman's, which is, you know, secret, like his 2015 Secret Wars is scope-wise the end of his Avengers run, but plot-wise and character-wise the end of his Fantastic Four run and the relationship between Reed Richards and Dr. Doom. Right? Um... So, I mean, I, I'm nervous about it as well. I think at the end of the day, like, I'm nervous about it as well. I used to have a thing for a long time, really before Phase 4. Phase, I mean, Phase 4 has thrown everyone for a loop. It's been a weird time. <laughs> it's been a weird time, y'all. Um, but I, I used to say, okay, doubting the MCU is the dumbest thing you can possibly do. And I've basically been saying that since, I think, I'm, I think Civil War. I think Civil War was the one for me where I was like, this feels too big. This feels like too many characters. Like they're going to introduce Spider-Man, or I guess maybe I didn't know that, but they're like they're going to they're going to bring in all these characters and have it be a Captain America movie. There's no way they can pull this off, and then they pulled it off. <laughs> they really did, and they actually improved on the event in a number of ways. And then I was like, okay, not doubting them again. Then they pulled off Infinity War, Endgame. Like yeah, they they figure out how to do this stuff. They figure it out. Phase four has has brought doubt back into the equation. Phase four has brought doubt back into the equation. There's been plenty of enjoyable stuff, uh, but there's also been a lot of like. Just very middling, very middling stuff. It has brought doubt back into the equation. So yeah, I'm nervous about Secret Wars at this point. Um, I, I, it's like, I, I don't think there's any way it can be as good as the Secret Wars I know and love. But again, if it's on an Infinity War level, then maybe, then maybe. I mean, here's the thing, here's the thing. Comics are just better. Like Comics are just better. It's just the way it works. And that's fine. Like you can still enjoy both things. All right, what else we got? Let's see. <laughs> Seeing here from Kurt, it's a very specific joke. It'd be funny if this was a lore source book, just like Three Worlds, Three More Moons has been doing. Uh, that would not be funny, Kurt. <laughs> that would be very rude and very offensive, and I do not want to see anything like that. Thank you very much. Let's see, what else do we got? Jack of Hearts is POV. Nah, I'm good. Nah. Thank you, though. Let's see. Quasar, sure possible <laughs> um what else what else what else is it interesting that this was pitched simultaneously with hot talks i 
I don't think there's necessarily much to read into that beyond the fact that that's when Hickman was coming back to Marvel. Like, it's not surprising he had big ideas, and when he came back, was like, here's what they are, and it just happened to coincide. I, I wouldn't read too much into that in terms of, like, how it may or may not intersect with Hox Pox, but again, if it did intersect with the Powers of Ten Cosmic stuff, I think that would be super cool. I think that would be the best thing. Original Infinity Watch team from the 90s, hell yeah. Let's see some of that. Comment here from Lucas. I recognize Secret Wars is FF forward in that Reed and Doom are the main characters, but come on, it's also the culmination of two great Avengers runs. Johnny and Ben are barely in it anyway. It's true. Johnny is the sun and Ben is a wall. <laughs> They're not. I mean, they like they, they do have big moments, especially Ben. I mean, Ben has, I think, probably my favorite moment in the entire 2015 Secret Wars. You know? <laughs> but... But yes, you're right. Like it, and also, like the MCU is an Avengers universe. The MCU is an Avengers world. Okay, we should not expect anything else until the X Men are around, and uh, and we maybe transition out of that because the Avengers have lost their luster. Maybe they already have. I don't know. Let's see. Molecule Man is POV. Sure, in play. Owen Reese. Oh, I I only want Owen Reese as our POV if. It also means we get um, Volcana. Got to have the domestic situation with Volcana prominently in place if we're going to do Molecule Man. Got to do it. Got to do it. Let's see. All right. All right. Keep the comments coming. We got like a few more minutes, but I think, okay, there's my pitch. There's my reckless speculation about what I think this book is going to be. Um, I feel like it's a lock. Hickman has said at this panel that like the gibberish doesn't mean anything right now, but once the first, first issue, first tease comes out, people recognize immediately what it means. Uh, but if we're talking powers that be, I, my first thought and the thing that I tweeted at the time was it says the word power, so it's probably power pack series, which like I'm not opposed to. I'm not out on Hickman Chi power pack. You can't tell me that wouldn't be <laughs> very interesting, right? It's a possibility. All right, all right. Get in any final questions here. Otherwise, we're going to end this live stream here in a little bit because that's basically all that happened today. Uh, today is New Comic Book Day, and normally on New Comic Book Day, I talk about the X-Men comics and whatever the heck I'm excited about in comics that came out, but there are no X-Men comics today. Uh, we're taking a week off. We are taking a week off, and um, uh, there's a technically, there's a Chris Claremont written Gambit flashback series that occurs... Oh boy, when does this occur? Uh, early 90s. It's when Storm was de-aged by Nanny and Orphan Maker. So it's Gambit and Little Girl Storm. These were issues that Claremont and Jim Lee did because the debut of Gambit is by Jim Lee um, with Claremont during that time. I think it's actually right in the wake of when the Shadow King was like after Storm, but I guess that stuff's still probably happening. So we're in between like Inferno and the Muir Island saga in X-Men continuity time. All of which is to say this is a flashback thing where Claremont gets to play with the old comics. And listen, Claremont's the X-Men GOAT. Uh, the entire reason I and so many others are absolutely in love with X-Men comics is because of the contributions for 16 years. 16 years! Incredible. Like, ridiculously long run in Marvel Comics history. Um, I don't need modern flashback issues. You know, I, there's, there's actually a lot of those today and just in general. Marvel Peter David's got stuff going on. Um, Janice Vell, who, who, what is the market for Janice Vell returning? Like, just mind-boggling. Larry Hama, Scott Wolverine, flashback stuff. I don't know why Marvel doesn't just declare a Marvel Legends imprint where they do flashback um, runs from writers who were great for them and did awesome work, right? Have a house for this. Have, like, a comics healthcare plan, essentially, where you're like, you've aged out of being the stars, maybe, of the contemporary comics line, but you're still big names, and you did great work for us, and you get a mini. You get to do your flashbacks, right? They're doing it with the Mannies, they're doing it with Hama, they're doing it with Claremont, they got Nascenti doing some like some work here and there, um, bring in Louis Simonson, right? You can bring back all the old greats who are doing well enough and want to write Marvel Comics. Uh, just have it in a Marvel Legends imprint. I don't know why they don't, like, segment this stuff, <laughs> you know? Because um, otherwise, people might pick this up and be like, oh, Gambit, like, that's related to X-Men, and what's going on in X-Men right now? And it's like, no, the, the, like, this story is, you know, 30 years old in publication years. You know, it's just, it doesn't hook me. It's not interesting. Um, I'm seeing the comment here, what about the new Extreme X-Men revival? Yeah, same thing. 
uh, Chris Claremont and Salvador La Roca are going to be reviving Extreme X-Men, which is the X-Men series from the early 2000s that everyone tells you to skip and read Grant Morrison, Frank Quietly, New X-Men instead. Uh, so they come back to that. Okay, that's actually where the Destiny Diaries come from. So like, in terms of relevance, that's it. You know, that that is, <laughs> that is the relevance of that run. Um, I'm not a fan and I'm not excited about it coming back. But again, Chris Claremont is, come on, is the reason I love X-Men Comics. Um, all right, what else we got? Oh, right, right. So no X-Men Comics this week. Next week is big, though. Next week has uh, X-Men Red and Immortal X-Men, the two best X-Men books. Uh, both, I think, are going to be tying into Judgment Day. Uh, if I've got that right, at least they should be. I don't know. Schedules are a mess right now. Um, the, the Hellfire Gala. So you remember in the Hellfire Gala for X-Men? Uh, there was a, there's a moment where Moira X runs away with Mary Jane and Spidey and Wolverine go chase her down. And there's a little editor's note that says, hey, check out the rest of this in Amazing Spider-Man number six. Or no, nine, apparently. <laughs> because Amazing Spider-Man number nine comes out in September. Comes out in September of this year. Hellfire Gala came out in July, early July. That book is scheduled for late September. <laughs> That's two plus months later, we're going to get the continuation of that story. If you needed any proof that scheduling is blown to hell... <laughs> There you go. I cannot imagine the stress of being a Marvel Comics editor right now and trying to coordinate continuity and timelines of things. Like, that's got that's like a job in and of itself, right? That's hard, and, and some are better than others. Uh, but in this instance, I am forgiving because, holy cow, there's no way you want your reference saying, yeah, check out what happens next, to happen two-plus months down the line in Spider-Man. Nobody's waiting for it at that point. <laughs> at least ongoing readers. People binging on Marvel Unlimited, who's going to care, right? When people catch up on this thing, it's not going to matter. Uh, but in the moment, <laughs> that's crazy. The scheduling is a mess. Got to be a mess. Um, it's going to continue to be. But yeah, next week, we're going to have the two best books, X-Men Red and Immortal. I think something else is coming out, Legion of X probably too. Um, and uh, I will not be streaming about it for reasons of my own, but I will be talking about those books because they're the best. <laughs> so there will be more on that. You can also find the full Judgment Day reading order on comicbookherald.com, uh, links are everywhere, but if you just Google Judgment Day Reading Order, you'll find CBH, and that's my stuff. That's where I'm going to be organizing and, and aligning where the books go chronologically, what you should be reading, what you shouldn't be, all that fun stuff, uh, of course, over on the reading guides there. It's what I do. It's what I do over on CBH. All right. Let's see if we got any final good questions. I'm saying a quick recap for those who just joined from Lucas. Sure, Lucas, I I'll do that for you. I will do that for you. Normally, I don't like to recap these things. You can always rewind but I will do it for you for once. Um, okay, Hickman and Chidi are not going to be writing an X-Men book. They are not going to be writing a Spider-Man book. They are going to be writing a giant Marvel Cosmic mini or maxi series, not an ongoing. Uh, it will have the POV character of, who do we decide? Who do we decide here? I'm already forgetting. Not Adam Warlock, not the Silver Surfer. Oh, Franklin Richards. <laughs> <laughs> traveling through the Marvel Universe, through the ages, as our Morpheus, as our uh, Sandman, not not Matrix style, although Matrix influences, sure, why not, but as Morpheus of Sandman fame, traveling through the Marvel Cosmos. That is what the book is going to be. Again, it's going to be a mini or a maxi series. I'm going to get between six and 12 issues, um, a la House and Powers. It is going to set up, set up a launch of a new Marvel Cosmic and all sorts of books being taken over, including a new Guardian series, a new Silver Surface series, a new Quasar series, uh, who else do we want to see? A new Pit Patrol mini, and uh, it is going to... None of those books are going to be written by Jonathan Hickman. I think that is what I decided. I think that is what I decided coming. Dave Stinney has spoken. Dave Stinney says, let it be. Um, <laughs> not an understanding this question. Do, 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 do. With this whole axe, I wonder if Apocalypse and the other external externals, what role they'll have. Uh, I think Apocalypse is going to come back. We talked about this last week in the Judgment Day video. Um, but I do think we could very probably... We're either due for a return of Thanos, which he's hardly gone anywhere if you've been reading Eternals, but we're either due for a return of Thanos to stop Uranus, or we're due for Apocalypse coming for May Month and, and bringing the hammer, which would be very exciting. I think that'd be fun. Other externals, I kind of doubt. I, didn't he kill them all and make them a gate? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what their status is, but I don't think they're around. Um, Bill asks, what is CB saying? That whatever culminates in Judgment Day leads to bigger things from Mutants in 2024. I think CB is saying he's the editor-in-chief, and that's what he says about every event. 
<laughs> and I know I'm being facetious, but like that's nothing. That's just the tagline of every event uh, is this will set up a big thing down the road. All right. Do, do, do. Ready to slander Iska next week the second she runs away from the Uranus fight. Uh, yeah, like I'm not pro Iska slander, but if Iska the unbeaten bails or joins Uranus, I'll be pretty upset. <laughs> I'll feel hurt. I I anticipate X-Men Red will be amazing because Al Ewing is amazing. I think it will flip a lot of folks' expectations and assumptions about what happened in Judgment Day number one. Uh, it's got its work cut out for it. It's definitely got its work cut out for it, but I think it is going to be truly, truly great. I think it is going to be truly, truly great. Uh, all right, final final thoughts. Any questions of porn here at the very end, I'll tackle. Dave, Thanos showed up in Janice Vell today. Oh, okay. Um, that, again, flashback. Flashback stuff. Any Anything Peter David is writing for Marvel, it's not current continuity. It's his, it's his own Peter David verse. All right, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna count that. Um, all right, there we go, there we go, there we have. Dave Sinead has spoken. We all know what we're getting from Hickman and Shidi. I appreciate you all joining me live, and and talking about it. Uh, good comments, good chat, good questions, all that fun stuff. Thanks for joining. All right, uh, again, I will not be here talking to Mortal and, and X Men Red next Wednesday, but I will be here soon doing the same. If you like uh, uh, what's going on here on the Comic Carol channel. Please like, subscribe, share, go to the website, comicarol.com. You can follow me on social at comicarol pretty much anywhere. And, uh, and we can chat there as well. So thanks, everybody, for listening. And as always, enjoy the comics.